Prokofiev was a very different kind of composer and a very different kind of man to Shostakovich. And his attitude to politics was very different. Partly that's because he traveled the world over. Shostakovich spent his life inside the Soviet Union. Prokofiev voyaged, he lived in the United States of America, he lived in France and Germany. He had a very different experience of life. And when he returned to the Soviet Union at the height of the Great Purges in the mid-1930s, this was a great shock to his friends. People couldn't understand why he was walking back into a tyranny. Well, one of the aspects of this was that they tempted him back with tremendous offers that he would be the leading composer in town and uh, all of that. And in answer to that, Prokofiev came walking back into the Soviet Union with a sense that he knew what the regime wanted. He knew how to write propaganda music. He had, if you like, many less scruples, perhaps, than Shostakovich. It's an arguable point. But one of the reasons why I think he was a composer who was drawn to the creation of propaganda is because propaganda is about telling stories and telling really, really uh, primitive stories often. And Prokofiev had always liked that, that kind of thing. We remember him for his Romeo and Juliet score for Peter and the Wolf, which is a piece of overt Soviet propaganda. Peter and the Wolf fits right into the way Soviet school children were conditioned to serve the nation. In his big pieces of that period, I'm thinking of things like the film scores to the great Eisenstein films, Alexander Nevsky, Ivan the Terrible, both of which are clearly propaganda films uh, supporting Stalin's political role, if you like, in the world, but they are also great works of art, and the fact that their propaganda can't, doesn't take away from their greatness as works of art. And out of that language, he shaped a new language of extraordinary directness. And in pieces like, I guess most notably, the Fifth Symphony, he was consciously trying to write music that would, it sounds crude, serve the war effort. Music that when it was played would have tunes that people could sing afterwards, that they would respond to. And also, of course, the key thing here is the language of film music. Because film music is the most complex music very often, but it appeals on a very simple level as a matter of storytelling. And all the composers of this period, not just in the Soviet Union, American composers as well, they're all learning from film music how you make a point, a very simple, direct point, to a broad public, and that's absolutely self-consciously what Prokofiev was setting out to do in these big pieces.